for a demonstration of how the staging was done. It was a specific question. And similar questions were asked to our friends to the left. A lot of new material was brought in. We kept quiet because we knew these were questions from the court and that no evidence should be kept away from the court in the search for truth. What we are doing, and then at the end of it, we'll consider, because we are also checking whether that is new evidence. Yes. I, I thank you. I begin by thanking the court for giving me this opportunity to make uh, my remarks as part of the rejoinder for the petitioner. Uh, my lady, the, uh, my lord, when I used to be at Alliance High School, every, every year, every year, Gidu, uh, Professor Gidu is very happy about me mentioning his school. When I used to be at Alliance High School, every year I took part in a school play. Most of the time there were Shakespearean plays. Macbeth, Julius Caesar, much about, uh, do about nothing. Can I recover my four seconds? <laughs> yes, I was saying I acted in every uh, school play for six years. And when I became a practitioner of law, I tended to have the habit, every time I would appear in court, to take some verse from those Shakespearean plays, be it a comedy or a tragedy. And one time, uh, S.M. Mutieno, who, from whom I, I learned a lot as a young man, in the practice of criminal law, he told me when I took my seat, did you read the charge? Did you look at the statements? Did you analyze the elements or the ingredients of the offense? Always remember, as a lawyer, that oration is not good enough. Substance counts when you appear before the court of law. And I'm saying this because in 2017, when he had a similar petition before your lordships, some of, of the advocates who are in that uh, petition, acting for the respondents when we presented our petition, said that uh, what we presented before the court was a science fiction. And I'm not surprised that even uh, at the beginning, and it's well covered in the media, that what we have presented before you is fiction. And because it is fiction, you had a lot of speeches which I think do not belong to a courtroom. They uh, probably should have been delivered in some theater where people love poetry, like my London friend, Professor Gidu Muigai, whom I know, having attended the same school as I am, as I did, we share a lot of things in common. We have presented before your lordships a petition based on abandonments which are contained in the petition. We have placed evidence before your lordships and the petitioners did not ask the petition to be struck out. Instead, they filed volumes and volumes of affidavit evidence 
and I've addressed you at length on matters relating to the petition. And yesterday, I remember when your lordships and my ladies asked questions to the respondents, my London friend, Mr. Gidu Muigai, said that uh, those questions were difficult questions, but not, they are not as difficult as the questions which were directed against the petitioner. But having said that, there is an important point about this new constitution. And I'm so happy that your lordships and your ladyships, some members of this court were part of the process of drafting this constitution. And my lady Justice Njoki asked a question which was very pointed. Why did we create these commissions? Why did we create these independent offices and secure their tenure in the constitution? And the answer is that we are dealing with an imperial executive. The commissions became an insurance policy for the protection of the sovereignty of the people. And if you look at Article 249, the commissions and independent offices are required to protect the sovereignty of the people. And what better tool to use in order to protect the sovereignty of the people than to have fair and free elections conducted by an, an independent body. And this constitution requires that the elections must be transparent and they must be administered in a neutral, efficient, accurate, and accountable manner. I would have hoped that if the Electoral Commission was indeed carrying out an election that was free and fair, transparent, and accountable, they would be offering all the evidence, including what is in the service, that this is what went on, this is the record, this is the return of the elections that were held on the 9th of August, 2022. I thought that we were making progress. Your Lordships and my, my ladies, there was a time that we used to file petitions against even the President of the Republic of Kenya under the old constitution. And if you approach the Electoral Commission before you file the petition, you had access to election documents and election materials before filing the petition. And I did that so many times. My learned friend Firoz Norji will tell you because I was a petitioner. And he filed such a petition. Now, to get information from the Electoral Commission even after filing a, a petition and an election has been conducted is like the road to hell. Because that's what it is. And in Article 249, the sovereign, who is the people of Kenya, require of the, of the Electoral Commission as a state organ to secure the observance of democratic values and principles and promote constitutionalism. Not just in the conduct of, his, of the elections, but even the way it runs its affairs. They cannot pretend that they are conducting elections and valuing and securing the pr principles of democracy as contained in Article 10 of the Constitution, and yet within the body itself, they don't value these principles that are not discretionary. They are, every state organ, every person is required 
to act in accordance with Article 10. What does the chairperson of the Electoral Commission do in the circumstance, not only of this case, but in, even in previous occasions? In the Electoral Commission, instead of having a commission of seven commissioners, and you have seen the factionalism here, you have a triumvirate, you have a trioka that is moving together all the time with the secretary of the commission. This is not what the constitution desired or contemplated. If you look at Article 88 of the constitution, the mandate of the commission in relation to the supervision of elections and referenda, at the end of that article, 88, and I think this is important, sub-article 5, the commission shall exercise the powers and perform its function in accordance with this constitution and national legislation. So that where the chairperson comes before you and does not show conduct that is in consonance with the, with the Constitution, is that a matter that this court can just gloss over? When the Constitution says in Article 2, that this constitution is the supreme law of the republic and binds all persons and all state organs and no person may claim or exercise state authority except as authorized under this constitution. And throughout that article 88, the constitution throughout talks about the commission except in two instances, one of them being the declaration of the results in a presidential election. So I urge my ladies and my lords that where there's been an infringement of the Constitution, however good the outcome, but there has been an infringement of the Constitution because the Constitution says how we should conduct elections. It does not matter whether you get 10 million votes or 20 million votes. If you get it by murder and killing people, if you get it by falsifying documents, however the numbers you end up getting in an election, that would not be the kind of election contemplated under Article 81 of the Constitution. The process matters. And anything in violation of the Constitution, if you look at the uh, Constitution broadly, any infringement of the Constitution, violation of the Constitution in relation to state officers, including the President, including members of commissions, any in, infringement of the Constitution normally would attract consequences of removal, impeachment, because it's a matter that this Constitution frowns on. And that's why I always appreciate the fact that this Constitution requires of citizen every person has an obligation to respect, uphold, and defend this Constitution. This petition is in defense of the Constitution. It is in defense of the Constitution because there is an election that has taken place that is putting somebody in, in office or is attempting to put somebody in office without meeting the requirements of the Constitution, not only in terms of, not only quantitatively in terms of votes, but also in terms of what 
the Constitution requires the conduct, the conduct of, of elections to be like. And the Milano senior, Mr. Firoz Nyoruji, referred to a, a football match. These days, football has many rules, and they keep on improving. However many goals you score, if it is from an offside position, whether you are Messi or Ronaldo, it will not count. It will not count. So I urge the court, and I am an optimist. I think we are doing very well in this republic. I think we have come from very far. And as one who has practiced in these courts, when things were extremely difficult, I know we are making progress, a lot of progress. There were times to file a petition like this was not easy. And if you file it, serving that petition will be very difficult. And that is not just because of legislation and a new constitution. The courts had made an intervention many times to protect the people against those who govern them particularly. I therefore invite your lordships that looking at the article dealing with leadership and integrity, what has been placed before you is not a matter that the court can frown on, I mean, I mean uh, gloss over. This court said in 2017 in the Raila petition that if the Electoral Commission comes before you with the same kind of infractions and transgressions, this court will not hesitate to take measures against the Commission and its leadership. That is in the Raila judgment of 2017. In 2013, this same commission, fortunately for the chairperson, he was not there at that time. Despite the fact that that petition was not allowed, but the court was not abused by the going on in the electoral commission. And by dint of the comments by the, that were made by the court at that time, at least a few people were taken to court, although that, that case is still going on. I think this court, and reading the Supreme, uh, Supreme Court Act, Article, uh, Section 3, together with Article 259 of the Constitution, which talks to how this Constitution should be interpreted, and more particularly when it says, in a manner that promotes, promotes the values, the purposes, and principles of this Constitution. And contributes to good governance. So, I urge this court, with all the humility, that uh, although this is a petition basically under Article 140, as defenders and protectors of this Constitution, you, with respect, cannot allow what has happened at IBC to go without some kind of action in the lines that were suggested by my learned senior, Feroz Norji. Impunity must be punished. Impunity must be punished. And impunity and punish breeds arrogance. And arrogance leads to a bitter exercise of power. And without that being done, this commission, which has got the prote protection of the Constitution without the court making some interventions. It still be a divided co uh, commission with a triumvirate that runs 
the affairs of a commission that is supposed to protect and defend the sovereignty of the people. And what I'm saying in a nutshell, that this election cannot pass on account of violation of the Constitution. Even by the constitutional dictates how this commission should run its affairs, if they cannot conduct their affairs in the manner dictated by the Constitution, then how can they preside over an election? And that election have some legit legitimacy to the people of Kenya and, and to the world. Secondly, and this would be my last point, that uh, If you look at Article 138, sub Article 4, and my learned friend Mr. Tienda addressed you on this, that requirement for a successful candidate getting 50% plus one of the votes cast is not a, an idle provision in the Constitution. It requires of the Commission to come with it before your Lordship seriously when there is contestation and put the numbers before you in rebuttal to the case that we have put before you. My Lord friend, Mr. Mahat, who is also my very good friend, in his address, he was not talking about what the law requires or what the Constitution requires. He was saying, this is what we do. This is what the Kimskits do. There was no constitutional or legal foundation that he was resting his arguments. And therefore, yeah, my lady and uh, my ladies and your lordships, I would ask the court to apply the provisions of the Constitution to the letter holistically and allow this uh, petition and return this country and, uh, back to the people who are sovereign and let a proper choice be made of the person who is going to lead Kenya in the next five years.